Welcome everyone, my name is Nicole Carletti and we have the pleasure to be here at the International Production and Processing Expo 2025. And next to me is Tarcicio Villalobos, who is the Director of Veterinary and Technical Services at SOETIS. Thank you so much Tarcicio for being here and thank you for so much for your time. Thank you, thank you for having me. Well, we want to start to talk about a uh, hatchery, uh, chick quality and um, chick health, no? Okay. Uh, we want to start with uh, what are some opportunities that you regularly see in hatcheries of making adjustments that may support chick health and robustness? One of the mm, simple and easy improvement that any hatchery manager can do is improve cleaning and disinfection practices. In the hatchery, we have two major sources for infection and contamination. One are associated with bacteria, and that is by direct contact between the equipment and the hatchery products. We are two products, the Fertilex and the Day-Old Chick. All the equipment that is going to be in direct contact with the Fertilex or the day-old chick must be clean at the point they cannot transfer any potential pathogen to the egg or to the day-old chick. That's number one. Number two is the, the air quality. In the hatcheries, there is a, a one pathogen that is very prevalent and it causes a lot of problems. And that pathogen is Aspergillus. And the normal and the natural way the Aspergillus spread inside the hatchery is through the air. So cleaning and disinfection for all the air ducts, fans, ventilators, to minimize the concentration of the aspergillus in the organic material is going to help tremendously to protect the animal against the infection and improve the chick quality. Yeah. That was a good description, but now we want to talk about uh, sanitation practices. Yeah. So uh, how do conditions is hatchery uh, sanit in sanitation practices impact the vaccines, delivery and overall chick health? Well, one of the first elements uh, to keep in mind is the water quality. The water that is going to be used in the hatchery must be, microbiologically speaking, drinkable and free of any pathogen. That is the first basic element. The water must be as good as is possible, chemically and microbiologically. And number two is all the instruments that are going to be delivering any type of vaccine, spray cabinet, subcutaneous vaccinator, the needles, Innovo, Innovo, Innovo vaccinator machines, uh, gel application, uh, application uh, devices, all those equipment must be clean and properly disinfected before they deliver the, any of the vaccine in contact with the egg or in contact with the chicken. And that way we are be creating a, a protection barrier between the chick quality and the ability of the, ch the, the chick or the embryo to establish an immune response against those specific vaccine they have been planned to uh, uh, to be used accordingly with the prevalent diseases the company have to face in the field. So sometimes it's not, it's not taking too much. It's just simple things. The problem with those simple things is it requires a constant effort and a diligent practice to continue doing cleaning, disinfection, and remove all the dirtiness that are accumulated. And it's, it's, it's required a lot of persistence. And as you say, the water is a really important element for chick quality, no? Yep, it uh, is. 
It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and how the conditions in the hatchery affects the vaccine performance and chicken immune response? As I said before, if those conditions are dirty and they, they increase the risk for cross-contamination between that dirtiness and the hatchery through the specific vaccine product that are going to be used. If that vaccine becomes contaminated, the embryo or the chick may go, go into a, develop an infection. If the infection happens, the ability of the animal to establish an immune response against the vaccine is lower. And we have a problem. The chick quality is not going to be good, and the immune response against the vaccine is not going to be good. And for example, what happened with environmental conditions? Uh, how do environmental conditions impact in our vaccinations, so sex in particular? Well, one of those primary concerns that we have when we do in our vaccination is the air quality. And it's a very simple reason. When we do the Innovo vaccination, we create a hole in the eggshell. That hole in the eggshell is allowed for pathogens like the Aspergillus naturally spreading through the air to easily infect the embryo. And that is no good. So we have to have as clean environment as possible especially when you do Innovo vaccination, because we already create a hole that is going to open the possibilities of the embryo being in contact with potential pathogens through a hole, a hole that is there. So it, it is important. <laughs> now about Soetis, no? Uh, what are some of the things that Soetis does in hatchery to help improve the chick health? When we go for a hatchery, for the first time, looking for uh, the Innovo vaccination technology is we assess the hatchery from the normal airflow perspective, pressure, and cleanliness. We specifically target some microbiological samples in different in different areas of the hatchery to determine if it's clean enough or is too dirty. We also have a sample associated with the air quality. In that way, we have a, a, a very clear idea if the normal practices in that hatchery and the equipment and the distribution of the areas in the, in the functional areas in the hatchery are not conducive to a clean environment for the novel vaccination, we tell the customer, you need to fix this first before thinking go to do some Innovo vaccination process. That's one of the first elements. The, um, the other element that we assess are the embryo development in the incubation process. We need those embryos have the right size so that we can maximize the Innovo vaccination efficacy. If the incubation process do not reach the proper embryo development, we work with the manager, try to look for which are the setting time, temperature profiles that is needed in order to improve that embryo development score and maximize the success of the process. Those are the basic elements that we usually do with the customers. And after they install the system, we repeat several process evaluations in order to guarantee the people remain educated, trained, and also the process are being taken in the proper oper uh, operative uh, procedure. Thank yeah. you so much, Tarcisio. That was an incredible description. <laughs> and uh, you want to say a, a final message for our followers? Don't be afraid that adopting new technologies. New technologies always challenge us with the changes, and the changes require modify or traditional way to do the things. Don't be afraid. Embrace the technology and trying to be as efficient as you can using the new resources that are, are, are 
or disposal in the modern days. Thank you so much, thank Tarcicio. Um, thank you so much for our people to see this video. Yeah. See you later. Bye.